Thank you, Aaron. Want to uh, extend a welcome. I think we uh, have a welcome slide here uh, to this worship service of First Presbyterian of Oakland. Um, I think each week we're going to have a new first in this service um, and invite lots of grace as we go along. Um, I just blocked one of my friends from coming in because I didn't recognize their name. Uh, they had a silly name from a birthday party. Uh, so uh, they are blocked and not able to join us, so hopefully we'll figure that out, but we are glad that you are here uh, this morning to worship with us. Um, hopefully you are seeing the closed captioning. Um, we are going to go back and forth between slides and uh, speaker view and the gallery view. Um, there is no order of worship, uh, but we will do a very traditional order of worship. Um, we will have confession, we will have prayers, we will have songs, we will have a sermon. Um, expect all of these as we move along. I will guide you as the host, um, but we are glad that you are here. Um, yes, you can move back and forth between speaker view and gallery view. We will try to mute you, help us mute along the way. Um, we are trying to lean into some of the strengths of the Zoom uh, experience, so please use the chat room, reach out to each other, 
um, type in things you're thankful for. We will have a time for prayers, but uh, you can check in with someone you haven't seen for a while, uh, directly message them, um, but let us enter uh, into worship this morning. I'm going to pray for us. Gracious God, we come before you uh, thankful that we can gather uh, in the midst of this pandemic with this technology. We thank you that we could see each other's faces, that we can gather around prayers and songs and your scriptures. Uh, guide us as we reflect uh, not only in your scriptures, but on the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. May we be guided as in these reflections. Uh, help us each and every day uh, to lift up our worship to you and our worship as we love our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. believe that we'll have our first slide. Leah is going to be our liturgist today. I'll invite you to unmute yourself and then hopefully the slide will be up. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Today in the service, we will be singing Lift Every Voice and Sing. This has been known to be the Black National Anthem. Listen for the invitation in these lyrics. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Let us worship God.
Thank you, Marilyn. I think Leah is going to lead us in our confession now. Today's confession is a prayer recited by Dr. Martin Luther King when he served as an associate minister of Ebenezer Baptist Church of Georgia. Last week, the Reverend Raphael Warnock, current minister of the same Ebenezer Baptist Church, became the first African American from Georgia to become a United States Senator. Please pray with me. O thou eternal God, out of whose absolute power and infinite intelligence, the whole universe has come into being. We humbly confess that we have not loved thee with our hearts, souls, and minds. We have not loved our neighbors as Christ loved us. We often give in order to receive our love is French and hate our enemies. We go the first mile, but dare not travel the second. We forgive, but dare not forget. Forgive us for what we could have done, but failed. Give us the intelligence to know thy will. Give us the intelligence to do thy will. Give us the devotion to love thy will. In the name of the Spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I believe we will have our next song by Aaron and Marilyn now.
So I got so excited for the next song that I do believe there is an assurance of our forgiveness that we don't want to skip over. So uh, uh, please join me in the assurance of God's grace. Hear these words of affirmation of God's love for us from Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for us. Where will you see God's love for you today? Will it be in the warm feeling of sunshine, a good laugh with a friend, the refreshment of an afternoon nap, the taste of coffee? Let us praise God for the many ways he shows his love to us. Amen. Amen. You're going to have to keep going, though, because we're going to jump right into the scripture now. So we're going to be looking, continuing the um, Gospel of Mark. Um, it'll be um, in the chapter one. So please join along uh, on the screen or with your Bible at home. The scripture reading today is from Mark chapter one, verses nine through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on, on him. And a voice from, came from heaven, <clears throat> you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels angels waited on him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. For the word in scripture, the word made flesh, and the word in our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let's see here. I'm going to put us in gallery view. You can choose yourself if you would like to see a lot of Pastor Matt or just a little bit of Pastor Matt and see other people. I'll let you decide that as we uh, jump into this sermon time. Um, I am going to uh, be weaving this scripture together. As we know, we celebrate uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. Uh, tomorrow, um, but I've been weaving his life in the midst of this passage as well. Um, hopefully the two stories as we are always trying to weave our own stories and the church's story uh, with the stories of scripture. Right away, we jump in from the margins of society. I've talked about this uh, during Advent, um, but we have here Nazareth of Galilee. Um, I just learned this week that it is not mentioned in any other historical sources, uh, only in the Bible. Uh, showing us that it is nowheresville, that Jesus comes from a town no one knows. It's kind of like if you came from a small town in the Bay Area and you just said San Francisco because no one ever knows where you come from. Um, Nazareth is nowheresville. It is a little place in the middle of nowhere, and he goes to the Jordan out to the wilderness. I am going to keep bringing this up because I think uh, many times we put our own social context on top of the scriptures. Um, when we don't talk about it explicitly, um, we act like they're uh, away from geography or away from uh, uh, the political reality or the social realities of the time. But Jesus was from this podunk town, middle of nowhere, and they went to the wilderness. Um, even learned this week that Galilee was frowned upon um, because it wasn't southern, uh, it wasn't near Jerusalem. It wasn't southern uh, Israel, and you had to go through Samaria to get there. So there's this place in the north, right? They, they're still part of our country, but... Uh, maybe a little bit less. They're a little, uh, maybe how uh, Northerners talked about the South for a while or still do. Um, there's ways we disparage different parts of our own country. Um, Galilee was disparaged. So Jesus had two checks against him. Um, and then he goes out to the Jordan. Uh, something I've been reflecting on, we've talked about how the Jordan and John the Baptizer being at the Jordan uh, was connecting to the ancient story of the Exodus, the importance of that ancient story in the life of the people of Israel, the story of liberation, right? When they were enslaved in Egypt and they cried out to God and God freed them. 
this story that they repeated every Passover. Um, and John here was touching on that, that the nation of Israel had lost its way and needed to go back to its founding, come out to the Jordan, come out and repent, come out and confess. I was reflecting on that this week. There are many prominent leaders who are calling for a similar way of how do we return. Um, Reverend William Barber, who is, uh, um, has revived the Poor People's Campaign that um, was a campaign at the end of Dr. King's life that he was pushing. Um, Reverend Barber says we need a second, uh, res uh, second reconstruction. So we need to go back to reconstruction, a time when we are trying to right the wrongs of our racial past. And we need to revisit that. Uh, another author I read this week, uh, Eddie Glaude Jr., he says we need a third founding. Almost go back to the beginning again. Let's do it all over again. Let's take our ideals and do it again. This is exactly what John the Baptist is doing. Uh, and I'm sure Jesus knew this as Jesus went to be baptized, right? He went out there to the wilderness with others, right? So you're guessing folks from the north coming, folks from the south coming, right? Meeting somewhere. Um, Aaron mentioned to me that there is a thousand places on the Jordan River because he has been there that they say this is where Jesus was baptized. I guess everyone can have their little turn in the river of this could be a good place where the historic baptism happened, but they were definitely in the wilderness, outside of power, outside of fame, outside of the decision makers. And this is where Jesus went to connect to this old story. And as he is baptized, right, one of the most famous lines, right, the heavens split open, uh, we see God's realm come into the earthly realm, right, and the famous words, you are my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. You are my child, the beloved with who I am well pleased. Amazing line, amazing affirmation of who Jesus is. Amazing uh, words, right? Even the touching of the Holy Spirit coming down as a dove. There are about a thousand paintings that you can find on this, right? That touch on this uh, God all together in God's three parts together in one picture. Here, this amazing touch is what every child needs, right? Words of affirmation, words of love, words of comfort, right? And touch, I, I was thinking about that this week of the touch of the Holy Spirit coming close. These words of affirmation is what every child needs, what every person needs, right, to thrive. Here, even thinking that maybe Jesus needed it as well as Jesus heads out for the ministry that God has before him. It is important to remember that this does not just stay with Jesus, because as Jesus is the Messiah, the Messiah is a, represent, a representative of the whole community, right? And that the whole community then receives what Jesus receives. So when we uh, celebrate baptism in the church, someone's baptism, we remember our own baptism, right? We remember that we are loved by God as well. So I want us this morning to imagine and to hear, right, these words from God to each of us. These words that you are a beloved child, right? That you, that I am well pleased in you. These are words that can uh, not be spoken enough, right? There are words that we need to speak to one another, right? The words that we need to remind each other of. They could be words that you pray every day. God, I want to feel, I want to know that I am beloved. I want to be cared for this way. It is an invitation, right? To each of us. These are powerful words that fuel Jesus's life. They're also words of comfort, right? They remind me of uh, part of Dr. Martin Luther King's life uh, when he first went to Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. This was his first post. Uh, the members of Dexter Avenue, uh, I think a professional middle-class uh, black congregation were sick of Vernon Johns, their previous pastor. He was a little too radical, a little too prophetic. Um, he would uh, even put on his overalls and sell fruit and vegetables out of the back of his truck. Uh, they did not like this. He was brilliant, but he was a little too prophetic. So they're like, we're going to get rid of Vernon Johns, and we're going to hire this young pastor and his family, Dr. Martin Luther King, and he's going to just be mellow, be our middle class leader. Uh, he is not going to shake things up. So Dr. King came in as the stabilizing force, and about uh, a year into his time there, um, the powerful women of Montgomery decided to stage a bus boycott. Uh, they sucked in all the preachers who didn't know they were going to be a part of this, um, who later uh, we know the powerful stories of these women who had been planning and had been working 
they weren't just tired on a bus, right? Many had sat down. Um, we know the story of Rosa Parks, but there were many others as well, right? That pushed this through, um, that made secret copies at their work, right? And passed out the bus boycott. And uh, so they had to make the Montgomery Improvement Association, a group to get together to plan this boycott, to plan this action. And one of the members of Dexter Avenue said, hey, we got this young pastor. He's kind of into social justice. Maybe he could be the president. Um, none of the other preachers wanted to be the president because they thought it was a lost cause and they knew that you were going to be in harm's way. So Dr. King, I don't know why he stepped into it, um, but he did. Uh, he stepped into it um, and he stepped in all the way to the vengeance of uh, white supremacy lived out in his town, lived out through local authorities, lived out through businesses, through law enforcement. He stepped into the mire of that. The beauty of people living out their faith right, by walking to work, by carpooling, but also that onslaught came fast and furious, right? I mentioned this last week, uh, racial violence is a long, uh, long history in our country. It is not something new. And uh, Dr. King and Coretta felt this strongly, right? Their telephone, uh, there was no caller ID at the time, right? You didn't know to hang up or not answer or erase the text. The calls just came, right? Death threats all the time. Uh, Coretta always answering that phone, um, constantly trying to sabotage their businesses and their lives. There was a moment when Dr. King was especially low, ready to give up. And he was uh, in the middle of the night praying. You've probably heard this story before. He was in his kitchen praying at the counter. And he, uh, he was praying with such fervor that he heard the words of God spoken to him. To me, they remind me of this uh, feeling here of Jesus looking up to the heavens, right, of the realm of heaven and earth coming together. Dr. King recounts that he heard the words say, stand up for justice and peace, speak the truth and do not be afraid, for I am with you, I will never leave you. Stand up for justice and peace, speak the truth and do not be afraid, for I am with you, I will never leave you. These are the words that, G that Dr. King heard Maybe that's an appropriate slip there, isn't it? Uh, that Dr. King heard in that moment that then gave him comfort, gave him reassurance in the months ahead. I've sat at that, or not sat at it, but walked by that kitchen table. It is a sacred place in Montgomery. It's a sacred house. There's also a sacred point on the front porch of that house. If you go around and if no one is around, uh, you can reach out and touch uh, where there was a bomb set on that front porch one night. Uh, Coretta Scott King was playing piano in that front uh, room or near there, right? Her kids were in the back of the house, fortunately, uh, when that bomb went off. Uh, Dr. King was not at home, right? He came running home afterwards, as did much of the community. Much of the community was ready to take up arms because uh, their leader's house had been bombed, right? Attacked. I believe that Dr. King in that moment when his own family was attacked was able to call for a nonviolent response because he had heard the words of God, right? The words of God that I am with you, that I will comfort you, that I will protect you. I bring up that because it is almost like the wilderness that Jesus is sent into. How can we survive the wilderness in our own lives? How did Dr. King survive it? How did Jesus survive it? I think it is because God reaches out and says, you are my beloved. You are my beloved child. We must listen for those words of God. Sometimes they come clear. Sometimes we have moments like Dr. King. Sometimes we have the assurance of our church community. Sometimes we have the assurance of the scriptures. But the foundation of us being able to live lives, right, worthy of what God desires is that we first are loved by God and then we can reach out to love others. It should be a constant question in our life. How will I lead? Uh, if I know I'm loved by God, how will I love my family members? If I know I'm loved by God, how will I love my neighbors? Or how will I serve my neighbors if I know I'm loved by God? It foundationally shifts our perspective, how we live our lives. We must constantly return to that, that we are beloved of God. This wilderness is clear to us, right? It feels like we're in the wilderness right now. I know as we turn the corner after Christmas, our family had lots of fun with that season. And then we thought, now what? 
now I just got six months, eight months, nine months of a pandemic still to go. What is the next marker? What is the next? We celebrated a birthday this week. So we just thought of what can we do that will get us through this? We are in the midst of a wilderness. We need to remember that we are loved by God, that we are beloved ones, that we can be guided by God. Dr. King was definitely in this wilderness, not only with the bombs on his porch. I want to mention these parts of his lives because we're going to get a lot of quotes. You might have got them today on your Instagram feed or tomorrow. A lot of quotes of King uh, that, in my mind, many times erase some of the radicalness that he experienced. They also erase the wilderness that he experienced, right? They erase the death threats. They erase the FBI weaponizing his own faults to try to destroy his family, destroy his marriage, right? FBI telling him to kill himself, right? Our own government, right? Trying to destroy a powerful leader. We remember Dr. King's approval ratings were down very, very low during this time. It was only a handful of churches that, and wealthy individuals that supported him much like movements for justice and peace today that have very low right, approval ratings. Dr. King knew that well. He was in this wilderness his whole life. We must hold fast, right, to being beloved by God if we are going to live into the truth and hope that God desires in this world. We must always return to this baptism waters. Whether you, maybe you haven't been baptized yet, there's always an invitation in this text that we could come together for a baptism. But if you have, even if it was before you remember, right, we return to those waters. We return to those waters with Jesus, right? We return to those waters with Dr. King. We return to those waters with our community. We must remember that we are beloved children of God, that God loves us, and then that allows us to live faithful lives each and every day. Amen. I'm going to invite a time of a response to this text. Um, remember, I uh, spoke last week that I believe the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to all, as, all of us as a community in a conversation as we try to faithfully live, uh, not just uh, one preacher, right? I'm giving some extra time to uh, gather some thoughts and to study and pray, but I'm wondering if any would like to share. This is not whether you like or don't like what I said, but how do we continue the conversation as God gathers us uh, to be a church together? Yes, Susanna. I have a question from David. Um, he wanted to know why there was a bomb on Dr. King's porch. So Dr. King was leading the Montgomery bus boycott with many, many others, um, men and women of Montgomery. And they had stopped riding the city buses, right? Because the buses were um, segregated. Um, black folks had to sit in the back of the bus. There was also lots of racial violence and terror surrounding the buses for black residents even to get on the buses, harassed and thrown off by white bus drivers. So there was demands that they would integrate these and the demands were fairly mild even, um, that they would hire a few black bus drivers, that there would be uh, less of this violence. Um, but as it went on, the white uh, residents of Montgomery, right, used violence, much like we saw violence at our own Capitol um, a few weeks back, they used violence to try to intimidate the members of the Montgomery bus boycott. So Dr. King as one of the focal points as the leaders was a lightning rod. So people tried to blow up his house. They harassed him and other leaders to try to stop the boycott. Others who would uh, respond to this text or to baptism, please, a way it would uh, continue the conversation in our, yeah, Judy. Um, the story of the bombing and that whole context really fits with our uh, song we began with, Lift Every Voice and Sing. It, it, we, they were not contemporaneous, but they were addressing the same issues. It just uh, is a very unified problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Any others desire to add to the conversation as God directs us and guides us as a church? Um, for me, this scripture, it represents kind of a turning point in Jesus's life where um, 
from here on, he like really begins his ministry. And I, I just found it very poignant that at least like for me, and I'm sure for others, there have been times where we went through a very difficult time and it, it represented a turning point into turning into like a different person or just like taking a different path. So that's what resonated with me. Man, thanks for sharing. Leah shared that uh, he gets sent right into the wilderness, right? The spirit even guides into the wilderness right after you get, so you get this touching of beloved and then you go right in. There's no, you don't get a lot of big party right there. You just go straight into some of the difficulty they can be mixed together. Any others, maybe one more? Yeah, Chris. <clears throat> you, you kept using the, the phrase beloved child of God and referring to, well, I, I'm not sure that the text is constraining who that refers to, but certainly within the church, it seems like that's an appropriate way that we could address each other. And I have to confess, that's something that's very hard for me to do. So it's a challenging concept. One of my heroes, uh, Father Gregory Boyle, um, runs Homeboy Industries in LA, um, working with former gang members and inviting them back to their beloved selves in many ways. Um, he likes to say that God is too busy loving us to be ashamed of us. I think the other side of beloved is that maybe we feel guilt or shame, but he says God is too busy loving us, right? Calling us beloved to be ashamed. I think it's powerful. Connects to what you're saying. Let us enter into uh, our time of lifting up prayers. Are there any who bring prayers? You can type them into the chat. Could also process the sermon in the chat as well uh, or continue the conversation. I can't read it all uh, in the moment, but we have others trying to respond to it. But if there are prayers, you can type them in or um, raise your hand, unmute yourself and start sharing them. Yeah, Susanna. Um, I just wanted to circle back. I asked last week for prayer for my brother who um, had COVID and he is, he had some really very difficult days this week. And um, he texted me that yesterday and the day before were his best days yet. So it looks like he's recovering and I'm very, very thankful for that. So he's, he took another test yesterday and he's hoping that it will now be a negative result. So thank you for praying for him this week. We give thanks for that. We keep praying for Anne Margaret's mother. Um, I think she has a new infection, so we lift up prayers for her. Yes, Amy. Uh, prayers of Thanksgiving. Um, my mother-in-law uh, had her follow-up appointment yesterday that all the treatment she's gone through this fall did seem to have gotten all the cancer. So um, very grateful and you know now into just the low monitoring. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Louise. Um, I have a prayer of Thanksgiving also. Today is my mother's birthday. She turned 90 today. Oh, what is her name? Jackie. Jackie. So we give thanks for Jackie's life and celebrate with her. Any others lift up prayers? I'm seeing some in the chat, so I'll try to say some of them, but... There are others. I'm gonna lift up prayers for a peaceful transfer of power come this uh, next week. A lot of heightened anxiety as National Guard is called out and lots of enforcement at the Capitol and state capitals. We have prayers for uh, peace and protection see prayers for teachers. We continue to lift up prayers for those uh, in harm's way of uh, this pandemic, healthcare workers. I'm looking at everyone's eyes and everyone's looking down. So maybe it's all of the chat, which is a fun uh, function of it. <laughs> Let us, uh, I'll ask Bex to put up the Lord's Prayer. I'll um, lead us in prayer, and at the end, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. God, you have heard our prayers as we lift them up, as we write them in our chat. They gather us together as a community. 
we lift them up uh, in the belief that you are one who hears like the ancient story of the exodus you hear our cries you respond to them you care for them this is part of your love we ask especially for the places of brokenness where we don't see heaven and earth coming together um, those who need uh, housing those who need work those who are sick come and comfort them there's so many members of our community who are recovering um, ask that you would uh, heal them quickly that you would Help us as a community to surround them with our support and encouragement. God, we lift up as well our nation. We are in an interesting couple of weeks. I know we have said that for months and months and months, but the increased violence at the Capitol right, and the threats of more violence, we ask that you, for your protection, your guidance, we ask for a reckoning of even accountability of events that have happened, but also our past and what this brings up. Help us as a people to be, as we looked at last week, ones that are quick to confess and ones that seek repentance in our own life, in our community, and in our nation. And we gather around this ancient prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. I invite you to pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Come. Thy will be done, will be done on, earth on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our this daily this bread, day. and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I believe that Marilyn is going to be sharing a special music with us at this time. And then we also have a special poem that's going to be shared, which is a surprise. So uh, I invite you, uh, you could put it on speaker view if you wanted to see more of the sanctuary. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'd like to Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'd like to share how my version of Were You There came to be. Um, I was watching television one night, it was Nightline, and commentator Ted Koppel at that time uh, was interviewing New York Mayor Ed Koch. And it was around the time that Jesse Jackson was running for president. And Mayor Koch didn't like Jesse Jackson, and so he was saying some very, very disparaging things about him. And I felt the need to jump up and chime in. You know, like we talk to the TV sometimes when we're not in agreement with someone. <laughs> and uh, Ed Koch was saying, he said he was there when Dr. Martin Luther King was killed. He wasn't there. And then I jumped up and I said, he was there, he was there. Were you there, were you there? And then all of a sudden, the Lord sent these words to me and I've had occasion to sing this version of were you there? I can't even tell you how many times for what, how many different occasions, even at funerals, I substitute the names of the deceased and the, the things that they have done in their lifetime. God has really blessed me with uh, giving me this song. And it was at a time when I was just really furious and God gave me a calming song and I'd like to share it with you. Were you there? You know, this is a spiritual, were you there when they crucified my Lord? But God has given me these words instead. Were you there when he marched for civil rights? Were you there when he marched for human rights? 
muting. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. What a beautiful rendition. Uh, Ruby is going to share a poem. We talked and we've been planning in Black History Month uh, about having several of our younger members share poems from the, especially the Martin Luther King oratorical that's upcoming. Um, Ruby is memorizing a poem by Georgia Douglas Johnson, uh, written during the Harlem Renaissance. And so she's going to share that poem for us. I'm Ruby and I'm going to be reciting Your Word by Georgia Douglas Johnson. Your word is as big as you make it, for I know I used to abide. In the narrowest nest in a corner, my wings pressing close to my side. But I sighted the distant horizon, or the skyline and circle of the sea, and I throbbed with a burning desire to travel this immensity. I bathed the cordons around me and cradled my wings on the breeze, then soared with the uttermost reaches, with rapture, with power, with ease. Amen. Thank you, Ruby. We have a few announcements we'll lift up. I think Bex will put up some slides uh, for those. So just a few reminders, um, I'll speak them out loud. Maybe they'll come up. Um, we uh, continue, uh, the Ministries of First Press continues 
to go on, even though we aren't meeting in person. So this is the friendly reminder that you can, uh, this is the passing the offering at this time, uh, multiple ways to do that. Uh, we do have, uh, the next one's great, Bex. Uh, uh, the Bible study on Wednesday nights. Um, it is in your, the link is in your email on Sundays. Um, there may be one on Wednesdays as well, but uh, it's the same link each week for that Bible study. Our new link this, this week, but uh, seven o'clock, we're working our way through the book of Acts, the women's circle. Uh, if you have not um, engaged that, you're invited as well. Um, I am still looking to visit with people outside as is appropriate if you're up for that. Um, you can uh, email me or talk to me. We'd love to uh, uh, get to know you better at this time. Um, food ministry continues. Uh, if you are not able to come in and help on Sundays or Mondays, you can always bake cookies. Um, I think Dory dropped some off this week uh, that people were raving about. Uh, if you would like to, um, you can drop them off on Sunday or Monday. Um, and we always have... Uh, funds from the deacons. If you're at a hard place, as we know, this pandemic is affecting us all at different times and different ways. But if we can uh, financially help you, um, the deacons will be reaching out to you. So that can always be a conversation that we engage. I invite you uh, to receive God's blessing. Maybe we'll do the gallery view right here at the end so we can all see each other as we are sent off to live as God's people in the world. Um, we will have a little fellowship time if you want to chat with people. Um, I read a great line that I want to benedict us or send us out, and it was called, I think it was from taking John Lewis's good trouble comment, but it was saying that we need more angelic troublemakers, angelic troublemakers. Uh, so my hope for you, and it feels really weird holding up hands, so I'm just going to benedict without the hands thing, uh, and it can't really stand. Yeah, it feels like the... Um, this is applause, right, in sign language? Susie, we could help us with this. But uh, the sending is that this week, uh, may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit tell you in the way that you need to know that you are a beloved child. That you are a beloved child, that God is well pleased with you, and may that send you out to be an angelic troublemaker. Amen. You can unmute un yourself, yourself and hang, hang out. out. Oh, oh, oh. Is it, is it? Amen. Thank you, Aaron. Feel free to hang out. Um, use the chat if you want. We will.